Good evening and welcome to the Mudisa Network. Tonight, the Free State Education Department has consistently reported better metric results compared to other provinces. We talked to the MEC, Makwe, to find out the secret to their success. Later on, legendary John Kani has just celebrated the success of Black Panther and his 75th birthday. He's still going strong and we draw lessons from his vast experience. In the sea of disappointment and despondency about education, there are islands of hope and optimism. Despite the lack of adequate resources, the Free State Education Department has consistently returned good matriculation results. According to experts, besides infrastructure, curriculum, and other resources, the key to success in the education setting is leadership. It appears the Free State has such an ingredient in the MEC for Education, Pule Habit Makwe. He is popularly known as Tate and has been in classrooms and lecture halls obtaining various degrees in the process. The MEC Makwe joins me on the show and I want you to be part of this conversation on social media. Please use the hashtag the Mudise Network. And uh, MEC, a pleasure to have you with us. Mm -hmm. And without further ado, congratulations on the consistent success you've been achieving. But like many people across the nation, I'm curious to know what the secret is. <laughs> no, but Tim, um, I think the, the secret in the province of the Free State, and I know that every time people expect big things, yeah. but I can tell you is what I believe is just teamwork. Um, you know, our teams are always teacher-led. We respect our teachers, um, we give them the leadership, we give them the support. But also, more importantly, uh, from the leadership perspective, you know, your premier, your executive council, starting with the times of uh, the premier, Isma Khashule, who was, who is now the SGO, uh, we received quite a number of, uh, you know, support for, 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 for education programs. And then uh, we also have got a lot of support from the communities. Uh, communities, I think we have succeeded in making education fashionable in our province. Mm. And therefore, we have also been able to attract, you know, sponsors, uh, people like in the private sector, uh, NGOs such as KT, KST, uh, Shanduka from the, the current president, before he was current, he was president. Uh, they supported us. And I think uh, that whole team, uh, we, if you give them leadership like I have given them leadership, we are able to achieve the results that we are achieving. Which is great. In, the, in provincial terms, yeah. but there's a report in The Economist yeah. which is not flattering yeah. of the South African education system yeah. and the World Economic Forum and other international yeah. bodies have commented yeah. on our education situation. Yeah. And I think at some point I saw a report that ranks us 124th in the world, yeah. you know, out of so many countries. We're probably the second yeah. from last when yeah. it comes to that. That's not yeah. a good indication yeah. and it, uh, it does have a bearing on even the foreign investment, direct yeah. investment. Yeah that we are talking about mm. uh, that we believe should be mm. attracted by South Africa. So mm. what do you think is the problem then with, with the basic education system? Well, well, Pratibu, you must remember that um, um, we've got the history of, uh, in education. Uh, we are one of the few countries where, you know, in the past there was specific legislation to exclude black people from education mm. system. Mm. And therefore, when you look at us now, I see an uh, emerging education system. If you look at all the international reports, I think the reports that we can respect <coughs> is a report such as TIMS, Trends in Mathematics and, and Science Studies. Uh, you will see that uh, amongst all the countries in the world, those who are participating, it's not every country is participating. Those that are participating, uh, your Asian countries, your European countries, uh, if they look at the country that has the most that the, that is most improved, it has been the South Africa, right? Recently, we had the results of PELS, right? This one for reading. I know that there was a lot of issues raised about uh, our children not being able to read for meaning, right? 
But if you look in an overall report, it tells you that the most improved country in terms of education has been South Africa. So I think Mayor Musaha has been doing very good work. Um, and, and when it comes to uh, reports such as World Economic Forum report, those were really are not uh, assessment based. It's, it's, it's feelings of business people about uh, what is happening in education. But if you go all over, SACMAC report, for an example, shows that uh, uh, South Africa is improving. So we must really uh, you know, praise ourselves that within 20 years, we've been able to produce some of the best uh, from those communities that were not meant to have education. And I think that's one thing that we must actually brag about I, I as will all South Africans. Yes, and, and you know, an argument can even be made about you yeah. that notwithstanding the past and the history yes. that you mentioned of how education was organized yes. in, in the country, yes. but here you are, yes. yourself. You went through that education system, yes. Yes. And, uh, but managed to continue learning and obtain yes. the degrees that I refer to. Yes. What, what is it then, in your case, yes. that's kept you inspired, motivated to study further? You must remember, Brad Tim, that um, um, in the past, very few of us were able to access higher education, right? I mean, I come from a small township to Mawale Paris. In my time, uh, you couldn't do metric there. Uh, you had to go up to only JC, or grade, what is called grade 10 now. And if you want to do metric, you had to live and go somewhere else, mm. Kwa Kwa. Mm. Or I went to Sibukin, right? And then, uh, so I'm saying that uh, since the advent of democracy, we have built five new high schools in that area. So we have broadened access, and I think this is one area that we must always remember. We have broadened access. More people now are able to read and write. And then, uh, so, so, so these are the things that uh, we must actually brag about, as I said earlier. But um, you know, families <coughs> play a very critical role. My mother used to say that um, um, my grandmother told her that when I was born that this one is going to be very intelligent, it's going to actually study. Mm. So throughout, even though my mother was not very educated, she kept reminding me that uh, the grandmother, uh, the said, grandmother said, yes, I'm going to be educated. So the role of the parents can never be undermined. Mm. The role of the community, you know, uh, when the results are out, when the community members come together and support the schools that's doing well, and if we can actually mobilize ourselves around those aspects, you will see we'll leap, leapfrog uh, in, in terms of education. But, but we are in the right direction. I'm yeah, yes, and I'll talk about the system. For now, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with Tate now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me of the big John Tate. Oh, so yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I suspect it comes from That's there, doesn't it? It comes, it does, I, it does. Why were you in boxing before? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's deal with... The, with big tate here. Yes, yes. I, I mean, education, notwithstanding the fact that it's a useful thing to acquire, mm. but you need to be a highly motivated person, mm. especially when you learn during your own private time mm -hmm. and when you've got other responsibilities, mm -hmm. which I, mm -hmm. I realize you were able to pursue mm -hmm. even in your adult age. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what, what is it that's kept you interested in it and uh, mm -hmm. continue to study and obtain the MBLs and so mm -hmm. on? No, but Tim, the, um, yes, you are right. You have to have self-motivation, self-drive. Yes. Right. Uh, but also, I know you said you must not talk politics, but I, I must also thank the African National Congress yeah. because, you know, um, you would have realized that I did chemical engineering at Valley University of Technology. And then when I was arrested, uh, I was in prison, you know, ANC used to encourage us to study. And then when I was working in a factory at AACI, I realized that uh, a lot of engineers combined the engineering with commerce. And that's how I started the chain of commerce. I started uh, a big home. And as you know, studying in prison was a privilege in our time. It mm. was not a right. Mm. I understand now people have been supported and so on. At that time, you know, it was a privilege that could be taken at any time. Mm. And then, therefore, I did a PCOM, and then after the advent of democracy, I did an honors uh, at, at the University of the Free State, 
and but I was not happy. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, made me study, you know, continuously has, has always been that I didn't really want to be a career politician. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to stay in politics for for a long time. I thought myself, uh, I, I saw myself as a, a freedom fighter, mm. fight, change the situation, go back and actually do what I know best with this engineering and that kind of thing. But unfortunately, you know, sometimes you plan and then uh, no, some and others decide. And, and it's <laughs> a, this, this question is intentional, it's deliberate on my yeah. part, yes. the one that I've just asked you, yes. because uh, you would know uh, there the could be, not all, there mm. could, be, could be some politicians who think, mm. no, the ultimate point is to get into politics, become a politician, whether you've got the skills or not. You see, now, you are an example of a different type of politician. You are in politics, mm. you are a graduate, yet, besides, despite the responsibilities that you carry, you still continue to study, you see. So, mm. you can share those, that experience with some of your colleagues. Well, I must say honestly that um, um, there has been a lot of support uh, from the legislatures to study further. National Parliament, all the legislatures, there's been a lot of programs, bazaaris, to allow us to study further. Because you must remember, Brad Tim, that uh, politics is five years. Mm. After five years, you may be elected, you may not be elected. And I think that uh, if you seize that opportunity and prepare yourself for any eventuality, you are able to, to, to get the qualifications that... Uh, that are available. But sometimes I ask myself, uh, if you are presiding or leading people who are educated much more than you, how do you know when they are not actually giving you the honest view or actually they're misleading you? Mm. So it's very, very important for politicians to, to have basic skills. They must be able to lead with a clear knowledge. If you lead economics, you must be able to know when somebody talks about inflation what they're talking about, right? If you talk about reading, you should have read yourself. And then if you talk to learners and say, um, I read a book uh, every year or every holiday, I, 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 I buy 10 books. You, you, you should know that uh, it takes effort, it, it takes sacrifice. You have to sacrifice certain things mm. to be able to do that. But uh, for the MBL, I always wanted to, to go back to business. Yeah. <laughs> So when I finished uh, the honors, I thought that uh, I went to VIS to say to them, look, uh, I want to do an NBA. At that time, they did not have uh, a part-time program. Mm. Now they have. Mm. And then when I realized that they didn't have a part-time program, I said, OK, I'll go back to UNISA. And I actually did a, a master's in business leadership, a program that I think actually helped me grow. Yeah, well, well you see. It can yeah. be done. Yeah. It can no, 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 besides no, rallies be. and any other thing. Yeah, yeah, you, you, st still you still go there. You still go there and things, say, you know, let me yeah. go and yeah, refresh, yeah, refresh and, 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 and learn a bit and, more. And, and you'll actually be surprised that people want to hear your view because they know that you can add one more thing. You don't just, you know, shout slogans, but you can add one more analysis. Aha, is on it this <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the point. So when we continue our conversation, we will find out what uh, commerce, what engineering, what MBL, what value that th these uh, degrees add to the provision of education in the Free State. Tate Marquay is the MEC for Education in the Free State Province, and it's a leading province when it comes to metric results, with limited resources, comparatively speaking, and I would like to hear your views as well. The hashtag, the Modisa Network, will be back in a moment. <laughs>